Hi, hi everyone. This is Venkatesh. Let me give uh, an introduction about the finite element analysis, an important subject in your sixth semester. Right. What is finite element analysis? It is a numerical technique for finding approximate solutions to boundary value problems for partial differential equations. In simple terms, FEM is a method for dividing up a very complicated problem into small elements and that can be solved in relation to each other. Useful for problems with complicated geometries, loadings and material properties where analytical solutions cannot be obtained. Yes, FEA provides you a solution, FEA provides you the ease to analysis. Before getting into what is finite element analysis, before getting into a clear cut explanation on these statements, let me uh, make it clear why one should have to analyze. Right. Um, having learned engineering thoroughly, having learned the nitty gritties and subtleties of the subjects, right? Uh, the engineering students at this particular point in time must be in a position to create something new, to innovate something new or to find out solution for the complicated problems. If you are going to design something new, your design must be evaluated. The, device, the design has to undergo several stages of analysis and several stages of testing. One such analysis is finite element analysis, right? To find the solution for complex physical phenomena, right? And the FEA can be used in structural problems, in thermal problems, in vibrational problems, fluid, electromagnetic, and most extensively used in the research and development uh, department of uh, big industries, right? When it should be, uh, if you are unable to find a solution to analytical method, right, to optimize that design, this finite element analysis is of great use, right? Right. Uh, to, to substantiate whatever the statements given in the previous slide, whatever uh, the definitions given in the previous slide, one must be in a position to understand what are the different analytical methods, uh, different uh, experimental methods and numerical methods, right? I said a design has to be evaluated, how it has to get its evaluation done. In uh, earlier uh, ages, in the gone over days, what people do, people always uh, make a prototype form of their design before uh, uh, making uh, the, the design or before uh, realizing the design, before seeing the design as a evolved product, they'll make a prototype of it, a replica in a reduced scale and they test it. The testing can be of various forms. They, they most mostly in those days they preferred the destructive type of testing, right? They used to uh, break the elements. They used to uh, crush the elements, and they they used to find out they apply various forces and see how the material or how the particular product behaves at this particular scale. Later on, later on, they they they, they made it big. And after the evolution of the material sciences and after the evolution of the techniques of characterization of the materials, uh, this, this developing a prototype and breaking it, you know, it, it has got considerably reduced in a way. Right. Uh, what is the destructive type of a testing? I'll give examples for destructive type of testing, which you have been familiar with, but you may not be knowing it is that it is the thing that is exactly I'm referring to. For example, if you take your uh, ultimate testing machine, you are testing the given material, right? What you are doing, you are certainly breaking it, you are applying force, you are making it to elongate at one particular point in time, it yields and breaks. So you are finding out at what exact 
force the material breaks where exactly the stresses develop where is the ultimate stress where is the breaking stress where the material yields all those testings have been done using a destructive mode of testing it is something related to testing a material then how about testing a product right there is a difference between testing a product and testing a material once you have tested the materials and taken all the necessary data of a material so it is possible for you to develop the uh, the methods of analysis and the method of testing for the entire product you need not have to go for a destructive testing of a product instead you use all those data develop a software using that software you can simulate your testing analysis right in order to simulate that you require certain data these data have been collected and there are various scientific mathematical numerical methods are available keeping everything put together nowadays so many softwares have been developed which we see in the later stages of this presentation right what is experimental method experimental way of doing is i told you, you know the destructive way of doing is uh, the, the test is an experimental method right the all those were hardness test your tensile test your uh, impact test but in, in all these cases you could see a kind of destruction that prevails but it is unavoidable they are all the experimental methods or you make uh, a, a product uh, i told you, you know you develop a prototype and make that prototype to work and analyze how it works at the scale you slowly slowly scale up that product then finally you'll get the product what you have designed what you have visualized right that would have been a wall that will be useful then why we need to do all these things i told you if any product developed by the engineer should give uh, a durability you should give a satisfactory performance over a period of time a product must be reliable and durable these things should be there in the mind of a design engineer right for which he has to put his design to various Uh, testings has to evaluate that design and finally that design has to be optimized before it is being uh, uh, realized into a useful working model or a product right the analytical way of uh, doing things i'll give an example for it if you know the any product if you take fea any product can be converted any structure can be Uh, converted or seen as a mathematical model right i'll ex- i'll give an example for it if you are uh, i'm talking about uh, a simply supported beam carrying udl to its entire span uh, the take the load may be w per unit length then what would be the deflection of that beam right people have mathematically derived it that they say y equal to 5 by 3 84 w l power 4 divided by i the moment when i say this equation it obviously takes you to this particular structure similarly any event for that matter can be converted into a mathematical model fea is more of converting any process any structure into a mathematical model i'll give another example if if you are cooking at home if someone comes and asks you what you are doing you will be saying i'm cooking in 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 uh, in in, uh, in english in a text but how will you convey this information mathematically to the person standing in front of you i'm saying q equal to minus ka dt by dx the moment when i say it obviously refers that you are cooking right in cooking what happens if you are you are having a scoop in your hand one end of the scoop there in the heat source the other end you are holding it slowly 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 what happens as the time increases the temperature at one particular point in time keeps on increasing and reaches your hand that is the temperature uh, i cannot say it is increasing the temperature changes uh, 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 it's a small correction the temperature changes at the source the temperature would be maximum the the point you are holding the scoop at that particular point the temperature would be minimum or even a zero perhaps that is why you could hold it right so the temperature t changes with respect to the distance 
x that is something changes with respect to something is differentiation so temperature differs with respect to the distance but this change in temperature with respect to distance may not be same for all the materials so the, the, the conductivity that we what we call it as conductivity of the material changes from material to material that is why you are adding the term called k the conductive heat transfer coefficient and across the cross section it varies and the, the minus sign denotes the temperature decreases the temperature cannot increase right the temperature decreases from source to the end point so my q equal to minus ka dt by dx is the mathematical representation of cooking let me say this for an example right a simple example similarly having evolved all those uh, governing equations we call that as governing equations governing equations the analytical method is more simple and we can do it for simpler problems that is why in the first statement in slide one in slide one see uh, it's a numerical technique finding approximate solutions to boundary values of course any problem has a boundary value some constraints for partial differential equations uh, yes it differs to if, if there are two different variables then it becomes partial so slowly slowly we will see what uh, what exactly it is now the complicated problems can be converted into small 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 elements then we can find out the solutions for that right going back to the next uh, slide Yes, coming back to the experimental, I told you all those destructive methods like your tensile testing impact, all those things come into our experimental method and again developing a prototype and testing is also an experimental method. Then comes the numerical method. Having collected all the data, as I told you, you, know, you can develop a simulation package, right? Uh, that helps in a way, it becomes pretty much easier. Before getting up into developing a software, you need to know the fundamentals, right? What are all the fundamentals of the, uh, the numerical way of analysis? One is the functional approximation. Have, if, if, if you are into developing a software, you need to know all these basics of the numerical method, like the fundamental approximation, the functional approximation, finite different, uh, difference method, finite element method, stiffness method, or displacement method, all those stuff. Functional approximation, I told you, any particular process can be converted into a mathematical equation, that too in the form of a differential equation. Because if any external forces applies on a system, the system is tend to change. So something influences a change in a system. So obviously, most of the changes will be in the form of a differential equation. So we have got n number of methods to find out a solution for a, a problem or a structure or a physical phenomenon. Uh, there are different methods that is weighted residual methods, Rayleigh Ritz method. They come under the category of functional approximate method. There is another method called finite difference method. Here you are not going to divide uh, the given domain or structure into various elements. Instead, you will divide that into various zones. Obviously, you must be knowing the differential equation of that particular zone or a particular phenomenon and you apply boundary conditions, all those stuff and you find the values. It is dividing the, the, the continuum, divide, uh, dividing the process into various zones, applying differential equations, applying boundary conditions and finding out the exact value of the field variable is finite differential difference method. It is helpful in heat transfer problems, fluid dynamic problems, and particularly the computational fluid dynamics is more of finite difference method. Then what is finite element method? You are dividing the given structure, given phenomenon into different elements, right? And you develop stiffness of each and if, if it is a structural matrix, uh, if structural member, the obvious thing is to find out the displacement. The displacement is influenced by the stresses developed in it. So you require to develop a stiffness matrix that we will see later on in the next uh, uh, subsequent units, right? The finite element method, I, I told you finite element analysis is more of an approximate technique, right? The real values will be different. Uh, if, if, if take for instance analytical method I told you I gave an example of uh, simply supported beam with the UDL a very simple structure so you developed a mathematical equation similar simple experimental models you can do experiments whereas for complicated things it is not possible for you you need to develop you need to divide those the entire structure uh, into different elements 
now n number of elements i need to develop a stiffness matrix to all those small elements and put together assembling together you find out a global stiffness matrix and applying boundary conditions you'll find out the values right that then uh, this is a kind of an approximate solution there is always a difference between the real one and the uh, thing what you are uh, developing here in the form of finite elements there lies a gap there lies a difference a residue will always be there how will you bring down the residue there are two different methods right one is the h method and the p method h refinements and p refinements right if you take functional approximation i said it is in the form of the equations right if you increase the order of these polynomials right uh, the more the refinement would be for the exact value and the value what you derive what you acquire through your analysis right that there will be a uh, difference in uh, so the difference would be much minimum the difference would be much reduced how about this h refinement h refinement comes for finite element method it is more suited for finite element method that is you increase the number of elements i said the given structure a given problem would be uh, divided into n number of elements if you increase the number of elements you reduce the residual value you will be going closer to the real value this is the general procedure of fea right uh, uh, here the first thing is uh, pre processing that is you need to uh, discretize the structure uh, you you need to develop develop the n number of elements is uh, divide the structure into n number of elements and the, the node name the nodes node is nothing but the point that uh, that that is in between two different elements the point of contact between the element is a node and then uh, find out the displacement function you need to find out if it is a structural problem if i apply load on a structure obviously there will be displacement so that displacement is the function or the interpolation function then you define the material property i told you already people have tested and have taken the databases related to the stresses the young's moduluses the ultimate stress everything and you put uh, in an in a, in this analysis then uh, you evolve what you create a database so it supports your analysis then you find the solution find out the elemental uh, matrices what is an element matrix what is the stiffness matrix how it has to be assembled put together everything will be clearly and elaborately dealt in your unit 2 as of now if a structure is given if a physical phenomenon is given what you need to do i need to straight away need to discretize the structure into n number of convenient elements then i'll have to find out the displacement function suitable for this type of an analysis then after that i need to take up the material properties needed material properties the, the, the material with which the structure or the the, the, the things with which the, the 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 variables that influences the processes then i'll need to find out the stiffnesses for each and every element and i'll have to assemble them I have to assemble them, make it into a global stiffness matrices. Then I'll apply boundary conditions. Then after applying the boundary conditions, I'll find out the solutions for the unknown parameters. Then computation of, with having found, find out the unknown parameters, it is easy for me to find out the values of stresses and strains. Right. Then comes the interpretation. Now, discretization. I know discretization is dividing. The art of subdividing the domain into convenient number of smaller elements is called as discretization. Element. It is defined as the smallest portion in the domain which should have definite shape and size. The art of subdividing a structure into a convenient number of smaller elements is discretization. Yes, it is good. Then smaller elements are classified as there are one dimensional elements. two dimensional elements three dimensional elements axis symmetric elements n dimensional element an example for the one dimensional element is a bar and bar elements are considered as one dimensional elements the simplest line element also known as linear elements as two nodes right as a sim simpler you are applying force at in the axial direction there will be change along the x axis 
whereas if you take two dimensional elements uh, the examples for two dimensional elements are the triangular elements and the rectangular elements where you can expect the changes along x and y directions so the field variable changes along two directions Similarly, the three-dimensional elements, the most common three-dimensional element is the tetrahedral or hexahedral. Then axis symmetric elements. Uh, axis element, uh, symmetrical element is that you make uh, any, uh, any section of a triangular section or a rectangular section to uh, revolve around a particular axis. It creates a shape that is an axis uh, ele elementary shape. The shape can be solid or uh, hollow, what is evident through the diagram given here. Now, numbering the nodes, uh, if you ask me, it is not uh, that much important when it comes to solving problems in unit 1 or unit 2, it's because why we confine only 2 or 3 elements, if the number of elements is more, then you can concentrate on this particular thing. Here, if you take uh, the figure 1.6a, uh, they have uh, numbered along the uh, row, row wise numbering and if you take 1.6b it is column wise numbering so there is a condition given here there is maximum number node minus minimum number node should be minimum so if you put if you take this into consideration and uh, uh, relate it to the diagram uh, it says that numbering uh, in uh, column wise is minimum that is why you prefer numbering column wise why because it it, it consumes only less uh, uh, less space in the memory so we need not have to bother about this thing because we are talking about the theoretical way of solving problems the moment if you go into developing a software and all those things then you can talk about this numbering of nodes and elements now, and you need to have an interpolation function i told you no? any any physical phenomenon is given for example i told you the heat transfer uh, equation the heat uh, that is q equal to minus kdt by dx Right, uh, this is the governing equation, but I do not know uh, what is the temperature, Ax, all those things straight away. So, what I, only the, 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 governing, uh, the governing equation is given, uh, the boundary conditions are given. How can I solve the problem? So, I need uh, a beginning, a beginning in the form of an interpolation function or a displacement function or a polynomial equation. The polynomial equation can be one dimensional, two dimensional, three dimensional, maybe this uh, quadratic and it may be the order of uh, four or five. The, 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 the more uh, the, the order, uh, the, the, the less would be the difference between the real, exact and the experimental values. It will be the, redu the, res the residue would be much reduced. Uh, whereas the complication keeps on increasing if you are into solve it manually. So you restrict, you always restrict. Right, uh, one dimensional or two dimensional way of uh, two dimensional functions alone. Right, the reason is here it says the interpolation function is needed to find the unknown parameter or field variable of a problem. Here, polynomial type of function is preferred over trigonometric, trigonometric functions for obvious reasons. If you take sine, cos, and uh, you keep on uh, working on these areas, it will be much complicated. Whereas it will be much easier if you take up the polynomial equations rather than the trigonometric functions, right? Uh, even it is easy to formulate and computerize. Even for, for computerizing, it is much easy, easier. It is easy to perform differentiation and integration. Yes, exactly. Performing integration and differentiation on a polynomial equation is much easier. So the accuracy of the results can be improved. Uh, by increasing the order of the polynomial. Yes, you can keep on increasing. I told you that is nothing but P refinement, what I referred in the earlier slide. The material properties are really important. You need to have to develop the material properties. Uh, like uh, your Young's model is, is one such material property. It is the ratio between stress and strain. What is the strain? Strain is nothing but the change in displacement by the original displacement and stress is nothing but the product of Young's modulus into strain. Uh, derivations of stiffness matrix and equations. The derivation of this stiffness matrix is pretty much there in your uh, unit 2 but based on what particular uh, criteria you will uh, derive the stiffness matrices. It is about the force. Force is nothing but F equal to KU. F is the ultimate, the final force and K is the stiffness matrix and U is the behavior. The behavior in the sense what if you apply force obviously the material will, will, will respond in the form of a displacement. 
that is what is called as uh, the, 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 the displacement, where you will experience those displacements, the displacements are experienced at the nodes, the node between two different uh, elements. As far as structural problems are concerned, there are two different problems that should be there always in your mind. One is a structural problem and the other is a physical phenomenon. For physical phenomenon, your functional approximation is of greater use. For uh, structural members, you will go for finite element analysis. Now, assembling, assemble the finite element equations to obtain global finite element equation. The, the, the earlier side gave f equal to ku. This is for each and every individual element, right? If you find out this force for each and every individual element and if you assemble it, I cannot say adding up. Adding is a, is a wrong term. If you assemble that, you will find out a global uh, equation, right? Applying the boundary conditions, obviously, you will have to find what is, what is the value initially, what will happen if x is equal to 0, what would be it? If x is equal to L, what is it B? If x is equal to L by 2, what would be the behavior of Y? All those things you take in your mind, these are all the constraints. You apply those con constraints to find out the unknown values. Then you find out the solution for the unknown parameters. After substituting the boundary conditions and input parameters, the unknown parameters or field variables are calculated by any, any one matrix solving method. For example, if this is the assembled matrix, I am applying boundary conditions to find out the value of stress strain. Right? Then the advantages, they can uh, readily handle complex geometry, finite element analysis, they can handle complex analysis type like vibration, heat transfer, fluids, etc. Can handle complex loading, node based loading, element based loading, time or frequency dependent loading can handle complex restraints, uh, indeterminate structure can be analyzed, can handle bodies uh, compromised of non-homogeneous materials. Yes, if a material is, uh, if a, a structure is made of different materials, you cannot have one uh, Young's modulus, the Young's modulus may vary. If it is a complicated structure, the variation of the Young's, Young's modulus it depends on the direction. Based on the direction, some of the properties may change and uh, you call that as uh, uh, isotropic. Uh, some of them are anisotron isotropic. So all these uh, uh, things have to be taken into your mind before uh, getting into the analysis. The special material effects uh, such as temperature dependent properties like uh, creep and plasticity, swelling etc. All those things can be easily taken up in, in, in a software that is done using uh, FEA. Right? And you need to find the final, the final interpretation where exactly the stress becomes maximum, where the material uh, starts uh, uh, developing uh, cracks, how the material cra cracks develop and where exactly the failure happens. All those interpretations can be much easier. If there is a, a, a breakage, if there is a sharp edge, if there are key ways, you can find out the stress concentration, where exactly the stress is concentrated more. Similarly, where the heat transfer is more, where the material loses its property, where charring happens. All those results can be arrived. That is nothing but the interpretation of results. Right. There are several uh, packages nowadays available. That is ANSYS, Natron, Factron, NISA, LS Dyna, Hypermesh, Katia, ProE, SolidWorks, Cosmos and Abacus. People have left Abacus here. So, right. In order to develop a software, one must know the introductory part. Whatever the methods of fire, that, uh, what is the weak uh, formulations, uh, uh, then uh, your uh, f functional approximation techniques, then your uh, finite element uh, techniques, all those things put together along with uh, your mathematical concepts, then you can develop a software package of your, uh, of your uh, choice. So one must have proficiency in programming languages, one must know the fundamentals of finite element analysis, then it is easy for him to develop a, a software of his uh, own for analysis. So you should have to uh, get to that situation. That capability must be there in each and every engineering uh, student if you aspire to be a design engineer, design engineer, right? Disadvantage, a specific numerical result is applied for a specific problem. FEA is applied to an approximation of a mathematical model of a system. The experiments and judgment are needed in order to construct a good finite element method. 
a powerful computer and reliable FEM solutions are essential input and output data may be large and tedious to prepare and interpret. Numerical errors such as limitations of the number of significant digits, rounding off occur very often. Fluid elements with boundaries at infinity can be computed and treated by using boundary element methods. Now what is the difference between initial value problems and boundary value problems? A differential equation along with the subsidiary conditions on the unknown functions and its derivatives all given at the same value of the dependent variable. Those problems are called as initial value problems. That is you always depend on the initial conditions. What is there on the other end is of not uh, so or not into our consideration. Whereas in boundary value problems it says it says a differential equation along with subject condition are given at more than one value. Not alone the initial value is more than one value of independent variable. For example, I, the, the examples are already given, right? Uh, y of 0 is 1. Similarly, y of 1 equal to 5. That is, you have got 2, 0 and 1. x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 1. In the earlier case, it is x is equal to pi alone. That is the initial value. So, initial value problems and boundary value problems. And most of our problems, what we solve in this unit are boundary value problems. Problems. Weighted residual methods, that is WRM method. There are different types of uh, things uh, available in this weighted residual methods. It's a powerful approximate uh, solution. You can come closer to the real value. You can. It is possible for you to reduce the uh, residues. The residual values can be considerably reduced using these methods. For final, for structural problems, the potential energy can be easily calculated. So the other method called RR method is preferred. Rayleigh Ritz method. Right. In WRM, we have got different methods, point collocation method. In point collocation method, I said R, R is the residue. The residue, again, I am reiterating, residue is nothing but the difference between the original or exact solution to the solution what you arrive using finite element method. This is the residue. Your idea is to reduce the residue as much as you can, for which you have got two different techniques. One is H refinement and P refinement. Okay, right. This point collocation method R is equal to 0. It is simple. You are equating the residual equation equal to 0 straight away to find out the unknowns. Whereas in subdomain collocation method, what you do, you integrate that uh, residual equation. Thing is, the moment if a governing equation is given, a trial function is given, boundary conditions are given, it is possible for you to arrive at an equation called a residual equation. If you equate that equation to 0, then it becomes your point collocation method. Again, if I integrate that R with respect to the change in variable dx, then I will get uh, some values. That the, the values are unknown. The values for the unknowns, let me say. The values for the unknowns. Then it is called subdomain collocation method. That is, you are making a particular region and you are calling that the region has no residue. It means if any uh, equation, if, if you develop uh, a residual equation, it is not equal to 0 initially. It cannot be equal to 0 and you need to make it as equal to 0, right? Then least square method, you are squaring the R, integrating it and equating it to 0. Then Galerkin method, you are multiplying this R with the uh, trial function, with the trial function. Then you are integrating it and equating it to 0 to find out the values, right? The more the complication it gets in, the more would be your, the values, the value would be much precise. Is a problem given here. Uh, we need to solve this using uh, the weighted residual method. d square y by uh, dx square plus 50 equal to 0 is the governing equation. So how, how will I solve this equation? The boundary conditions are given at x is equal to 0, y equal to 0. At x is equal to 10, y equal to 0. Moreover, I am given a constraint. My x lies between 0 and 10. And if, if I am given state, say, governing equation, boundary conditions, range is given. So what should I do? I should have to find out an interpolation function. That is y equal to uh, a naught plus a1x plus a2x square and so on. So in order to reduce uh, the complication of the problem, I restrict myself to a naught plus a1x with two just unknowns, right? And I need to put all my boundary conditions into that particular uh, thing. 
uh, in the in the in the solution in the interpolation function again i'm reiterating the interactive in the interpolation function or the approximate solution straight away should be y equal to a naught plus a one x i am applying both my boundary conditions into it slowly 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 i am getting a solution called a trial solution that is nothing but y equal to a one x into 10 minus x is the trial solution or the eligible approximate solution now what i will do see all those methods weighted residual methods one particular thing was so common that is r you need to find out the residue r how will you find out the residue r by taking this trial function y and putting it in the governing equation i'll have to differentiate this y twice and if I add 50 into it, I'll be getting an equation. That equation is nothing but R. Right? If I equate that R equal to 0, then I'll be getting A1. The, the unknown would be A1. I'll be getting that unknown. Similarly, if I uh, integrate that R, then I'll be getting the unknown A1. If I square that, I'll be getting that unknown. Similarly, if I multiply that R with this uh, W, W is nothing but your Y. If I integrate dy by dA1, then the value will be x to 10 minus x, right? If I multiply that, then I'll be getting the, the values, that is the method, Galerkin method. So, different methods are there. Collocating method, straight away you equate. Subdomain, you integrate. Least square, you square and integrate. Galerkin, you multiply with the weighting function and integrate. The weighting function is that you are incorporating a weighting function so as to reduce the residue that is the idea why i am not uh, dealing with the, the weighted residual methods the weighted residual methods are the easiest methods everyone can solve a problem the the intention of this particular video is to uh, work on uh, the fundamentals of fea and straight away for the Rayleigh ritz methods there's an another problem it's a structural problem the earlier one is a physical problem this one is a structural problem so there is a difference between these two so uh, the functional approximate uh, approximate technique is suitable for physical phenomenon as well as to structural problems here uh, a simply supported beam with a udl is given right you need to find out uh, the unknown values and find out the deflection using point collocation subdomain least square method and galerkin method as usual uh, the governing equation for uh, this is ei d d uh, d dy power 4 divided by dx power 4 minus w equal to 0 whereas x lies between 0 and l e is the x modulus i is the moment of inertia so straight away so this is the governing equation you should have to keep that in mind most of the time this governing equation may not be given so one must be in a position to uh, find out the governing equations for various structures there is no other go so from there you can go for trial function straight away you are taking a trial function you need not go for uh, the the basic values so straight away trial function is there so what you do from here you 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 integrate sorry you differentiate uh, sorry you differentiate this y four times four times then you multiply that with ei and you uh, subtract w then you will get an equation that equation is nothing but your r the idea the moment when the governing equation boundary conditions and the ranges are given what you need to do you need to find out uh, a suitable trial function and you make that trial function uh, you apply boundary conditions find its eligibility then you apply it in your governing equation Say the governing equation says that you should have to differentiate it to four times uh, multiply to a minus w so the moment if you do all these things you will arrive at a solution called r the residual solution this is a problem number four in problem number four uh, a one meter dia 50 mm long aluminium pin fin is shown there and uh, the governing uh, equation uh, is given that is k d square t by dx square ph by a t minus t infinity t, t alpha t infinity is given and the boundary conditions are given t naught uh, is equal to t w equal to 300 degree centigrade and uh, dt by dx at uh, l equal to zero all those things put together you need to formulate out uh, find out the value of your temperature t right now assume a trial function has been assumed here t naught x equal to a naught plus a one x plus a two x square again the procedure is quite uh, the same right sometimes the trial function may not be given 
but so far whatever the problems that is dealt in your local author book uh, they will give the differential equation as well as the trial solutions without uh, the trial solution uh, it is not possible for many of the people to solve the problems if a trial a solution is not given in your question need not have to panic you can derive a trial solution on your own what would be the trial solution you write down the approximate solution t not uh, like t r t of x a not plus a one x plus a two x square then you apply the boundary conditions then you uh, you up uh, then you will get uh, the, the the trial function you will be you will be arriving at there is the trial function here what they have arrived is t of x equal to 300 minus 2 a 2 l of x plus a 2 x square how how did they come to this particular point after applying boundary conditions to the assumed trial function this trial function is not that not given in your question only the governing equation is given in most of the questions governing equations as well as the trial functions will be given if trial functions are not given you take you assume that the interpolation function as your trial function you restrict the number of unknowns to minimum a not plus a1 x plus a2 x square don't go to a3 x cube then you apply boundary conditions and come to the original trial function this should have been given t of x equal to 300 this thing minus 2a2 this particular equation must be given in the question paper but it is not given if it is not given no need to lose your confidence you come from the approximate solution whatever it be whatever it be if your trial function obeys the boundary conditions then it is possible for you to go ahead with your problem then you put uh, the trial function in the boundary conditions then you find out the residual equation r what you are getting now that is d square t by dx square minus 400 into 270 uh, you take this equation to that side so uh, that becomes your uh, residual equation from now on you can go for that the point collocation method uh, least square method uh, subdomain method and calorcid method now comes the principle of virtual work states that uh, in equilibrium, the virtual work of the uh, forces applied to a system is zero. Newton's law states that at equilibrium, the applied forces are equal and opposite to the reaction or constraint forces. This means the virtual work of the constraint forces must be zero as well. See, <coughs> here, uh, if you take the force versus displacement curve, uh, at the moment the displacement increases, the force increases, the moment the force along the y-axis increases, the displacement will keep on increasing up to one particular point. That particular point is your yield point. From then on, the uh, deformation from elastic to plastic takes place. Right? The area be below oh, this, this triangle is nothing but your strain energy. Now. Uh, work on a particle, uh, this is a point A is vi uh, virtually displaced, uh, imaginary small displacement to A dash, from A to A dash it happens, R is the resultant, all these uh, minor, minute things, the concurrent forces, the linear forces, resolution of forces that we would have already uh, learnt in your engineering mechanics, right? The principle of minimum potential energy, this is more important. This is more important. The total net energy contained in the structure, that is the potential energy. Sum of strain energy, I told you what is the strain energy, that area uh, below the area taken by the triangle, below the yield point is nothing but your uh, strain energy. The sum of strain energy uh, and potential energy of the applied loads is the total potential energy. What is the minimum uh, total potential energy? The structure is in equilibrium status when the potential energy has a minimum value. Whenever your potential energy is a minimum, right, the structure is said to be in equilibrium status. This is nothing but the principle of minimum potential energy. Put together, that is, this, uh, this total uh, potential energy and the principle of minimum potential energy put together makes your Rayleigh Ritz uh, problems. See, how will you solve uh, this problem using Rayleigh Ritz technique? Rayleigh Ritz technique. See, I'll, I'll give this example, right? This uh, again, uh, simply supported beam with a UDL is given, right? Now, we are not going to solve this using weighted residual methods, the WRM methods. Instead, we are uh, uh, going to solve this using Rayleigh Ritz method. So, again, what I am doing, I am taking a trial function y. 
a1 plus sin pi x by l a2 sin pi x by l, so by l. say i'm given my strain energy i have I've, I've derived an equation for strain energy for the beams there's nothing but u equal to ei by 2 integral 0 by l d square y by dx square the whole square into dx is the strain energy equation derived in the earlier semesters in your strength of materials unit 5 that is a derivation for strain energy the strain energy says if you uh, differentiate twice your uh, uh, interpolation function or deflection function the trial function twice and square it then later on if you integrate between the boundary condition 0 and the l and multiply by ei by 2 uh, the fractional rigidity then you will get the strain energy so I've immediately after find if I've read the uh, question the question says it's an uh, simply supported you carrying UDL uh, straight away I've taken up a trigonometric function it is also possible for you to solve the problem using polynomial equations right so to understand how it could be solved in trigonometric equations so I'm giving this as an example right I'm taking a a trigonometric function the sine function y immediately immediately after uh, reading the question i'm taking y equal to a1 sine pi x by l plus a2 sine 3 pi x by l what i'm doing i'm squaring it up i'm, di I'm, I'm, I'm differentiating it twice squaring it up I'm di differentiating it twice having differentiated it twice and squaring it up i'll be getting a bigger equation somewhat a bigger equation like this my u equal to this thing square it is nothing but a plus b the whole square so a plus b the whole square so applying all those boundary conditions and what is the value of uh, pi equal to zero what is the value of pi at uh, 180 pi at 190 all those putting everything is a fundamental uh, integration technique so I'll, fi I'll be finding out the value of u right by putting into u finding the value of u then comes then comes i need to find out the value of h right the h is nothing but the external work done so it takes too much of my mathematical calculations to arrive at this particular point u now work done by external force h is nothing but integral 0 to l small w y into dx that small w can be small w into l you can simply make w l y that is also right right because the w varies between 0 and l that is the meaning here why do you integrate at uh, the external force because my y varies along the distance x at from z x equal to 0 to x equal to l that is the meaning that is the uh, hidden thing here right now after finding out my x uh, h value I'm going for applying total potential minimum potential energy pi equal to u minus h y minus the load is acting acted upon this structure the system experiences an external force that is u minus h so if I partially differentiate this pi dou pi by dou a1 I'll be getting the value of and equating it 0 I'll be getting the value of a1 similarly partially differentiating uh, dou pi by dou a2 I'll be getting the uh, value of unknown a2 so after finding out the value of a1 and a2 and substituting these values uh, in y because the y is nothing but uh, a1 sin pi x by l plus uh, a2 sin 3 pi x by l so having found out a1 a2 my problem becomes pretty much easier now i have found out the value for my deflection where y is the deflection the end of the day the value of y is uh, the deflection if i apply all these uh, boundary conditions if i if i keep on giving the values for my x what will happen at x is equal to l by 4 what will happen at x is equal to l by 2 what will happen at, at x is equal to 3 l by 4 i can find out the values obviously my idea is to find out the maximum deflection the maximum deflection would be at x is equal to l by 2 right so if i apply the value of x equal to l by 2 i'll be getting y max y max is some value is getting a 0. Uh, uh, 0. 136 wl power 4 divided by 3i if i put it if i equate it it will come around 5 by 384 wl power 4 divided by ei similarly there are a lot of problems it's a beam problem uh, in the, if you take uh, it's also a beam problem similar beam problem is a point load it's a point load it's very simple there's nothing but wl power 4 divided by 48 ei similarly you can go for bore elements
in both elements there is a minor change instead of e i it will be e a for beams you'll take a uh, moment of inertia into consideration for bore problems it is not required it is the basics is all about the basics of finite element analysis in unit 1 thank you so much 15 minutes